it starts with a drawing. You have the idea in your head, you transfer that on a paper. I'll probably do about 10, 15, 20 different sketches of the piece in slightly different poses, slightly different styles. And then I'll, I'll narrow it down, I'll shortlist it, I'll interview each sketch if you like, and, uh, and then one of, the, one of the sketches will make it through to the, uh, to the next round. It's a bit like X Factor really, you know. <laughs> if I like that sketch, I'll make a small model, just made out of plasticine, not a permanent piece, and that's a 3D sketch. If I like that, then I'll, I'll start and build the, the workshop model and the clay is the artistic piece, that's the arty bit. So you go from this positive to this negative um, process and I produce a, a plaster cast. And then from the plaster cast we make a, we make a positive again um, in, in resin and, and then it all goes together just by magic here. <laughs> You're a combination of joiner, builder, plasterer, uh, and artists all, all rolled in one. As a schoolboy, uh, my best subjects were uh, art and technical drawing. As I left school, I decided to go and get a job rather than uh, go to art college. Uh, and so I homed in on the technical side and, and chose a career in engineering. But in actual fact, the art career, if you like, um, was partly born out of the, the technical side of the engineering work that I did. The common ground with, with uh, the technical side of engineering that I was involved with and then the technical side of art is, is the ability to actually conceive things in three dimensions in your head and then possibly sketch them three dimensionally and then produce them three dimensionally. So whether you're doing that uh, producing an engineering structure or whether you're producing um, an artistic structure, it's the same basic principle, it's design and build. When I gave up the, um, the regular nine to five uh, weekly, weekly pay um, of, of the engineering uh, business, um, uh, it was a completely different uh, self-employed aspect as most artists are, it's, it's, it's the business of art and uh, you've, got to, you've got to pay the bills. So financial has, has, has been the, the struggle because there's, there's highs and lows, it never rains and then it pours. It would be wonderful not to worry about finance and then you could sculpt for fun or whatever your art form was um, and, and who knows maybe that would uh, that would allow you to create uh, better freer art, but I don't know. I think some, somehow the pressure of, of having to produce and the pressure of having to go after stuff has its own uh, benefits as well. So um, it probably works either way. People see the work out there and, and, and they assume that you're getting work like this all the time, but all, most of the sculptors I speak to are in the same boat. You're lucky, you get a big commission, but then another one might not come along for another couple of years. So you've got to try and struggle along as best you can. So I'm just like anybody else, any self-employed person who's living on overdraft and credit card and, uh, and friends and family who help, help out at times when, uh, when times are tough. So uh, you do what you have to do to keep the, uh, to, to keep the art going and uh, avoid going back into the old job. <laughs> I didn't go to art college and I didn't study art. Part of me would have loved to have done that, but I've kind of ended up in, in sculpture, possibly some would say through the back door, but um, being self-taught isn't the worst thing. It's not that rare. I wish I had had some lessons. It would, it would have saved a lot of time and a lot of mistakes, but um, there's no harm in, in, in finding out the hard way, which is making mistakes. Inspiration can come uh, in, in lots of different ways, but for me, it's, it's born out of uh, my own experiences. I'll take an experience or um, an event or, or something that interests me uh, and then try and put my own twist on the piece and then possibly use some of my own imagination um, to uh, 
um, put put my own little stamp on uh, on, a, on a piece. I, I would guess that most artists are, are reacting to the world that they're living in. You know, whether it's a, a figurative piece or whether it's a, an abstracted piece, and it's all born out of the, the, the natural world and, and the culture that human beings have uh, have actually. You know, the, the culture evolves all the time, uh, and so we express ourselves in different ways. Um, and uh, you know, it's one of the things that, that makes us unique. Art doesn't need to be complex, um, and, and perhaps some artists see it that way. For me, it's not. It's fairly simple. If you can get your idea across without, you know, a, a chapter of words uh, explaining it, I think that's a far, far cleverer a concept than something that, that requires a study group to go after it. Um, and I think if, if you like, to make the analogy, if, if, you can, if you can say what you're saying in one word rather than in a sentence, I think that has more impact. Art can get a, a, a reaction in seconds. Some people might get it, some people might not. Some might like it, some might, might not. That's, that's the, the brilliant thing about it, as long as people are, are reacting and, uh, and commenting. You've got to have doubt. If, if you don't have doubt, then you'll make too many mistakes. Um, and you can't afford to make mistakes being a sculptor because um, impulse has to be avoided. This is a piece of work that's going to take you weeks and probably months and might occupy a year or two of your life if, it's be if it becomes a big, big public work. Uh, so you just can't afford to be impulsive. Doubt, yeah, yeah, you need to have lots of doubt. You need confidence, but you need to be, uh, you need to be able to critically analyze what you're doing. When you're young and inexperienced, uh, you, you do need a lot more positive reinforcement as, as an artist. Um, anyone does, any youngster starting out in, in whatever they're doing, particularly the arts, all artists crave positive reinforcement. Uh, we're, we're a little bit fragile like that, I'm afraid. You've got to have pride in your work um, and you've, I mean, to, to do it in the first place and to want to show it to people, uh, you've, you've got to be proud of the piece before you show it. Um, certainly in, in, my, in my case, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to produce anything that people, you know, derided or, you know, or, or were offended by. But having said that, once the piece is done, it's forgotten about. It's not like you feel a, a great rush every time you see the piece again if you're passing it in the street or whatever. When I'm working on a piece, as I've said to some people, I'm either parked or I'm 100 miles an hour. Uh, and when I'm working on a, a piece of sculpture, I'm 100 miles an hour and I'm, I'm impatient, I'm pressurised, I'm working long hours and I'll work seven days a week till it's finished. And, uh, and I'm not very pleasant to be around. But it's the best way to get the job done is just keep going foot, uh, foot, to, the, foot to the boards till you get to the end. It wouldn't matter who you are, I mean, if Michelangelo was alive today, there'd still be a small percentage of people who didn't like his work, because that's human nature, and actually that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Um, if everyone liked your work, um, there would be no real way of measuring it. You need the critics, and you need the people who pan and dislike and hate your work, as much as you need the people who like it. No reaction at all is, is worse than someone spitting at it and, and wanting to damage it. Um, if someone walks straight past your work, and I've had this happen, I've, I've had pieces in public where I've sat and looked and waited to see uh, people's reaction, and the worst, the worst thing you can get is when somebody walks straight past it without, or possibly glances and then doesn't stop. That's, uh, that's far worse than someone standing and telling you it's the worst thing they've ever seen. <laughs> My latest work is Catfish. Um, Catfish was uh, inspired by a trip to Singapore, my first uh, visit to the, to the Far East, and I uh, had a wonderful trip. And I was, uh, I was quite impressed with the place uh, and the people there. And um, Catfish is my impression of, this, of the modern Singaporean. It's, it's loosely inspired by the merlion, the, 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 the mythological beast, the head of a lion and the body of a fish. 
Um, I've, I've combined a ana reasonably accurate anatomical shark uh, as opposed to a, a generic fish. Uh, and I've, I've gone with a mago shark, which is the, the fastest uh, of, the, of the shark family. Uh, and then a, I've, I've brought it to the front of that um, a stylized, uh, modernist, if you like, art deco type of lion's head, male lion's head with uh, coiffured hair. <laughs> and uh, I've put the, the, the pectoral fins uh, in the shape of, uh, of, of, uh, of pipes coming out. Uh, implying some sort of V8 engine, uh, some sort of internal combustion engine in, inside the beast. So it, it's a mixture of, um, it's a technological piece of mythology, if you like, that hopefully places it in the 21st century. So I'm representing a, a, an age-old myth uh, in, a, in a modern day format um, and I'm putting it in a, um, a dynamic style again, the strong dynamic style that I'm, that I'm trying to get across there and hopefully I've achieved that I would like to think I have. In the short term I, I, I hope the pieces uh, are looked at whether they're liked or disliked that they'll still entertain. Um, ultimately um, it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't really matter um, we are at the end of the day we're, we're ants on an ant hill you know i'm one of seven billion people on this planet when i'm dead i'm gone I'm, i'll have no hopes or aspirations for my work because i'll be dead and gone i'm not that big a deal my work's not that big a deal you know um, the universe exploded 13.8 billion years ago everything was created then in a different format i'm just reshaping dust that's all and it'll all end up in dust when we're all gone anyway